Hey guys, welcome to, to Unbiased Rugby. So uh, I've been thinking more and more about the, the Super Rugby Conference system uh, and, and ways that we can try and prove it. Uh, and yeah, there's, there's, there's been a lot of options out there about having a round robin kind of competition and I, I just want to go through the pros and the cons of, of each one. And then I, I think I, I may have a, a possible solution. I, I feel it, it might be the, the fairest of, of, or the best of as much as possible. Uh, but it does involve compromise. Uh, so uh, compromise, by its very nature, means that every single person in the pop, uh, every single person in in the whole uh, compromise walks away from the table unhappy. So uh, it's an agreement or set. Uh, this is from the, the dictionary. It says uh, an agreement or settlement of a dispute that is reached by each side making concessions. So there's obviously. The problem at the moment is that the New Zealand conference is very, very strong, and then and, and the derby games are, are are causing a lot of injuries in because uh, uh, they they're very intense. So that competition is extremely strong, and I, I know Kieran Reid came out and said, you know, it's very, very unfair that uh, that's that's happening to the New Zealand side because of the injuries. Uh, so there's there's a lot of reasons for that. The other the other thing is that uh, uh, the two the the top players the, the top teams don't actually get the home semi-finals it's actually the top of the conferences uh, which is also a little bit unfair uh, but I, I can understand why that's happening uh, the other thing is that not all the teams play each other so you may reach reach the finals without playing like last year and, and uh, I think it was last year the Lions had didn't play any New Zealand sides so there's there's a lot to be said about uh, about where we where we should where we should go. Uh, so there's been a lot of talk about a round robin system. Uh, if we've got the 15 sides, that means that be there's 14 games that you, you you'd have to play. Uh, you double that, so it's 28 games. Uh, that would extend the Super Rugby season by I think two months, and that's just not going to happen. Uh, it's, it would just make the competition way too long. 28 games is it, it would have more problems playing that much rugby uh, for for player welfare than than the current system, which is. So obviously that's that's not the ideal. So the only way to have a full round robin system is we'd have to drop teams. Uh, we'd have to at least drop one team from each conference. Uh, but that would still leave if we drop one team from each conference, that'd be twelve teams. It still leaves twenty two games in the regular season for uh, home and away, which is also not a, which is still a lot. It's it's doable. It's it's four extra. Four, I think it's four more extra games than this year, or it could be a little bit more, six more games than this year. So that's that also comes with its own issues. You know, it's an extra month of competition. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, not ideal. So the perfect scenario for a, a full, complete round robin system, top to bottom, would be a, or it be a ten man, uh, a ten team competition, uh, which is, which is quite intense because that's five teams that have to be dropped at forty people per squad, with with uh, then obviously coaches and assistant coaches. Uh, admin staff, you're talking 60 per per thing. That's 300 people uh, employment that you that you're affecting, and that's that's also uh, not not a good idea. So I uh, I was trying to look at it and try try see what would be a, a a way of amicably getting through getting through the the thing. So I looked at the Pro 14 because that that's the only other competition that I, I could see that actually has a uh, has a conference system. Uh, the reason why I think their conference system is is a lot better than than ours is it's not uh, country uh, country dominated. So by that I mean is they don't have an, uh, a Welsh conference, uh, <laughs> uh, an Irish conference, a Scottish conference. They don't have that. The the teams are spread across both conferences. So of the four Irish teams, two are in one conference, two are in the other. The South African teams, one in each. The the Italian teams, one in each. So it makes it a lot fairer. Because the teams are spread across the two conferences, uh, so I, I I used that as the model, and I thought, okay, the only way that that would work is we'd have to drop one team, uh, which which is not not good, but uh, we'd, we we would have to drop one team, uh, and then th there, then comes the decision: and do we keep the fifth New Zealand side uh, and drop the Sunwolves, or do we keep the Sunwolves to try obviously expand Super Rugby or, or the, the the viewership base in Japan? And drop the. Um, it's up to New Zealand to decide who they drop. So, but I'm just going to say, let's for for my arguments, I'm going to say one New Zealand side gets dropped. Uh, so it end up having two conference systems 
we'd have uh, in each conference we'd have two New Zealand two Australian two South African and then one of the others so uh, one would have Argentina and the other one would have Japan so literally it's completely divided across the two conferences and and that's how it is then it works out to and I was thinking in your own conference you need to play every single team home and away that works out to 12 games and from the other conference you need to play each team once and that's seven games it works out to 19 games in the regular season uh, that those those uh, from playing from the other conference uh, it would be drawn at the beginning of the year if you play them home and away and it's like you wouldn't play the same team it may, may alternate you may you may play them at home two years in a row or play away two years in a row but that's it's just a it's just how it's drawn out in the beginning so just to repeat that in the one conference you'd play each each team home and away and then from the other conference you'd play them once either home or away and that works out to 19 games then the top four from each conference uh, would go across to uh, to playoffs and then the first team uh, both first teams on both sides of the conferences would get home finals a uh, home quarterfinals uh, so the first team would play the fourth place team in conference two conference one's first player would play conference uh, two's fourth uh, conference two's uh, first would play conference one's fourth and then work it that way. So the two conferences would obviously start uh, going against each other for uh, to go into the semis. Uh, then the, the top four teams would obviously either get their home semis than the home finals depending on where they are. Now, it's, it's still we still may hit, uh, get the issues of that uh, there may be somebody who's, who's head of conference one that may be behind in points in conference two, but you know you, you've got to you've got to take the good with the bad. Uh, we need to try come up with a system that's a little bit fairer that doesn't involve us playing twenty eight games. So I, I, that's what I was looking at. I, I thought if we went to two conferences, we split the teams across uh, both conferences, and those conferences uh, play each other in the quarters. Uh, I think that might be a way forward. But you know, listen, I'm open to discussion here. Yeah? Uh, because you know, I'd really like to to try figure out a, a, a way that we can do it. I, I don't want to drop down to ten teams because I don't want to affect the livelihood of three hundred people or have three hundred people that now will go go to Europe or and, and we lose those players here. So that's not going to work. Uh, I, I don't want to drop that that many thing that many teams. The current system is not ideal. Uh, so maybe this is a, a way to go forward. It's, it's a compromise of, a, against everything. We don't have uh, the, the intense derbies in, in, in set conferences, and it might make it a little bit fair. Look, it, we could end up in years where New Zealand take all four top spots, you know, so, and that's just the way it is. Uh, and then the other teams would have to improve, um, improve going forward. But yeah, I think it, it would take away the, the nationalist uh, aspect of Super Rugby and bring it back more to about the franchises. Uh, and, and I think that that's the way to go forward. But listen, really, please write down what you guys think, and uh, I'll try to respond to the comments, uh, and and we take it from there, and, and and try come up with a solution that works. But listen, guys, I hope you have a great week. Chat to you guys soon. Cheers. Bye.